Yeah. We need to up our game and shit. We need to do comedy butt naked. Right? <laughs> saying his goodbyes. He blew his eye socket off and his uh, eyeball fell out. White women keep kidnapping us. <laughs> Y'all seen the blind side. Aren't you uh, glad we have that disclaimer uh, at the beginning of the yeah, episode? Yeah, I'm, 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 it's going to come in handy for this episode. This week's episode of The Voice Party is brought to you by Big Boy Raps. Get your car wrapped by some of the most experienced and skilled in the Bay. Big Boy Raps, where the big boys play. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Voice Party Podcast. We got JD next to me. What's going on, man? It's, uh, drinking coffee. Yeah? You good? Excited. You feeling okay? I'm all right. Yeah? Not yeah. hungover? <laughs> I don't want to talk about that right now, dude. Okay. 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 All right. No, I'm not hungover. I'm just underslept because okay. I drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. All we right. got Joaquin right next to me. What's hey. going on? Man. You feeling good? Glad to be here. You got your coffee? We're good? I'm a coffee. Yeah. yeah. Got red eyes. Red eyes. <laughs> yeah. We're good. That's why I've got the coffee. Yeah. And we got the man with no voice, Corday Snail. Hey, hey what's up, guys? How you doing? Just happy to be talking, man. Just yeah. You know, <laughs> last few days I didn't have a voice, so it's still kind of going out now. But yeah. Yeah. All right. Here. And on the ones and twos, we got Phil. What's going What's going on? What's cracking, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> this is can, new. This is new. We're, we're I love working. It. I can, love it. Can I just say, though, every time I cut to Corday and Joaquin, they look like a tag team. <laughs> <laughs> the Dudley Brothers? Yeah, yes. That was, that was bad. Wow. Yeah. That was very bad. Very bad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a very special guest today. Oh. My good friend, Mr. Jesse Crossin. Yeah, what's Woo! up? Thank you, guys. That was, yeah. I like the, yeah. What the fuck, Phil? You, did, was, yes. you, you missed it. Gosh. Come on now. You know white people are offbeat. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Jeez. Man, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you guys are so nice, man. I'm, I'm excited oh, to talk to you Thank you for guys. coming, man. Thank you for coming all the yeah. way from... Yes. from Sacramento. Sacramento. Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. Got yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. I was going to ask, do you live in Sacramento now? I live just outside of Sacramento, okay. Bolson, yeah. but I work in Sacramento, so I'm, I'm Sacramento. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you guys, you have always claimed as an artist to be from Sacramento. Yeah. That's why I feel like, because I've been there now, I guess I've lived in Sacramento like 12 years. And that's where okay. you perform more? Like, yeah. That's oh, you for do sure. a lot of Sacramento. Yeah. For sure. Is there a, a bigger pop scene out there, do you find? <sighs> Good question. Bigger than, I, bigger than like the Bay? Mm hmm Oh, I don't know. Um, I actually, I, touring scene for sure. Like as far as like smaller, do a lot of like, bands go there? A lot, a of, bands lot of bands in there, but I've yeah. always felt like every band I've ever been in has always been like the softest band in the set. I always, I always feel. <laughs> I don't. Us. I mean, I'm, I yeah, bet because too. it's it's kind of similar, but it's like always that way, man. Everybody's a little bit edgier, a little harder than us. All yeah. Oh, okay. But there's a lot of bands out there, and the music scene in Sacramento, I think, is great. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's kind of interesting being like a, a pop group. What's the band scene in in Sacramento more? Is it like more punk? Is it uh, like metal? What what, what what's because you um, say you, you like you said you said you, you're like the so, the softest you know yeah I think it I think it comes in waves oh god I don't want to miss genre somebody I feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get trapped but there's like I feel like there there were there was like a big pop punk wave for a long time okay. and then it kind of was a little bit more like post hardcore um, there was I know there's a lot of metal going going on, mm -hmm. but I, I it's not my scene, so like mm -hmm. I don't I don't really know a lot about it. Um, there's Cause, like because when in Sacramento, I think of Ace of Spades, and you know, totally, yeah. And you guys have played there a few times, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Ace is, Ace has always been great. We've always been on like showcase like showcase type concerts with right. like ten people on the bill. Yeah, that's like what we've always done at Ace of Spades. Oh yeah, yeah. And then there's like this is kind of like weird niche, but there's there's also like a massive jazz scene in mm -hmm. Sacramento, oh, which sure. is kind yeah. of like where I come from a little bit. Um, so there, there's like so much music going on and then there's also like, uh, a lot of kind of more like almost like folk influenced, uh, sure. like acoustic softer stuff that goes on there. Cause you get a lot of country out there too. Yeah. 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 For Country's sure. It's huge out in sack. Yeah. There's like so many different pockets. It's just like, you just, you just have to find, find your way to the different bubbles of, yeah. of like what's going on. And then Ace actually is pretty flexible with like what kind of genres and what kind of bands and groups come through there. I feel like, um, and then, sells. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and then there was, I, I don't know if Holy Diver is still open. Did you ever play Holy Diver? I did not play Holy Diver, but I so, believe... It was downtown, right? Yeah, it's on yeah, the yeah. 21st. I believe it's still open. I think it is, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it, we were worried it wasn't going to be open for a minute. Something. We played the opening night of Holy Diver. Did that you? Was, that was sweet. Nice. Yeah. How'd you get that? Uh, Good question. I think our manager knew... The guy who was doing like production mm -hmm. management for for Holy Diver when it first opened, mm -hmm. and so we were. I think it was just the right place, the right time. It was cool. pretty sweet. Are you guys still with that same manager? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he's still we're still super close with him. We just ha- because our band's kind of been in a right. hiatus kind of thing. Is it hiatus or hiatus? Hi- is it hiatus or yeah, hiatus? Yeah. It's hiatus. 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 Is it for sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Gosh, I never, I've never I've heard of. I never heard of hiatus. Hi- hiatus. hiatus. Yeah, I've never, never heard. Of that. Oh my god. Maybe in England. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing so random. Dude, I've said hiatus my whole life. Hiatus? Are you serious? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I fucked up. I said yeah, I said Wi Fi wrong one time. Yeah, you can cuss. <laughs> you uh, say Wi-Fi? I, I said say? Wi-Fi one time, <laughs> and it stuck to our family. I, I hate that the Wi-Fi. <laughs> like my mom wifi and dad says that free Wi-Fi or the um, uh, when it memes memes instead of memes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, like, oh my god! Yeah. Stop behaving yourself. The yeah. <laughs> Are you guys GIF or GIF people? I'm I'm a GIF. <laughs> GIF. GIF. I'm GIF. Okay. Every time I hear GIF, I think Jiffy. Uh, Jiffy but, but peanut butter. Peanut butter. Oh, yeah. I've always and it's not yeah. it's not Jiffy either. It's Jiff and Skippy. Well, I said Jiffy and I meant cornbread. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. So mm. you said Jiffy. I thought Jiffy Lube because that's the tire. Wow. wow. Okay. wow. Yeah. All, all different tons, tons of different stuff. Yeah. Wow. Totally. Yeah. What? Only one of these things is edible. The other one kill you. I mean, technically, no. <laughs> technically, anything. No, what did they say? Oh, what was it? Oh, never mind. That was, that was a bad sex joke. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, anyways, well, so uh, you're yeah, in a hiatus right yeah. now? Yeah, it's, yeah, sort of. So we're, we're kind of coming out of it. I don't want to say too much about that, but we're, right. we're coming out of that. But we're still with that same management. Okay, cool. Um, and he's like, he's awesome. He's like a great person. His name's Andrew. He works for, um, works for the Kings. Right, right. Um, which oh, is nice. pretty cool. I'm not a Kings fan, but. And J- uh, Jaden is though good, right? Jaden is. A You're in warrior fan. territory. Jaden right? feels <laughs> conflicted. Uh, He's a Warriors fan too. Yeah, we grew up Warriors fans, but then he when he moved to uh, when he moved to Sacramento to go to school. This is like um, maybe like right before COVID, right, right, like 2019 or something. Um, he really wanted to grab on to like a community, right. a little bit of like the. So the, he joined the cult of Kings fan. Absolutely, gotcha. he did get it. He got season tickets, and they were like so cheap because the Kings were horrible. Oh, horrible, right? Yeah. yeah. So they were like, like, horrible, and so he's going to all these games. So I got to give it to him; like he was there. He yeah. was he yeah. was trying for the Kings. Sure, but now when the you know Kings Warriors play, he like he always texts me these big long things of like conflict in his soul. It goes deep. <laughs> it really does. It goes deep for him. He's like, I just feel like, you know, I feel like our whole family. Like this is a life changing decision. I feel like I'm letting our family down. I'm selling out. Yeah. That's yeah. what happens when you switch religions, man. Yeah. 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 No, I was going to say that's, it's not as extreme, but it's kind of like being a Niner Raider fan. Yeah, I it's, don't like the Raiders. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Or, or it's I know you guys Warriors, Lake. So I always feel people who became war, Lakers fans or yeah. Kings fans were war, and they live in the Bay Area were, war, were Warriors fans, but they was always trash. Mm. But the Kings were good at one point, mm-hmm. so people was like, "Well, I'm not gonna be my." Was this that the, the Chris Webber era? The Chris Webber era, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's uh-huh. like I'm not gonna become a Laker fan, so yeah. become a Kings fan, and they yeah. was like, "Well, I'm not gonna become a, a King, a, like Sacramento." Nobody goes to Sacramento, so I'm gonna become a Laker fan. Right. So it was always like those two different things. The bandwagoners. Like, yeah, the right? bandwagoners. Me, yeah. Meanwhile, bunch Detroit of sellouts. Lions fans have been oh. faithfully cheering on they, they those losers for centuries. <laughs> them and the Browns. Them and the Browns. Yeah, yeah. Because also another thing too is like, sorry, not to shit on your city or anything, but like Sacramento oh. wasn't like a pop in place back in the day when no. we were younger. Sure. Yeah. Like it's recently starting to like really. Well, it's changed a lot. Don't right? say that to my wife though, because my wife is a she's from Sacramento, so she's uh-huh. a Kings fan. Like. Loves Kings, um, and and was like super into him back in in like 2002, like yeah. the big that, Chris that, that big, yeah, yeah exactly. Yes, yes. And so uh, when we had a daughter, that was a big that was a big decision for my daughter. Where <laughs> like, like which way are you gonna go here? Right. Okay. You have to stick with one. Yeah. So we bought her a, we bought her this this like onesie or a dress or something that was uh, cut right in the middle. So she had Kings on one side, Warriors on the other, and that felt bad yeah. i didn't like looking at it yeah, yeah. and so <laughs> i've never said that out loud but i did not <laughs> get this I did purple not off like my daughter at, oh it, i don't like mixing the teams yeah um but then they played each other in that series this last yeah. um whatever june or Earth, I, just, I just i just picture hey you want to hold the baby now no no, yeah. no really. i'll hold this yeah, side i was gonna say it's like the it's like the trophy where it's yeah. Like, I, feel, yeah. I feel so dirty why because i had king shit on me <laughs> yeah. uh but my daughter she rooted for the warriors so oh, I, feel, nice. I feel bad nice. i feel bad for my wife but it's okay. Sorry, I'm passionate about yeah. sports. So. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah, he's a. I, I noticed, uh, like, w- when the new Golden One Center, when they finished it, like, there's more, like, there's more in that area now. There used to be nothing there, right? Well, that's it's fun. Was, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's so nice. Yeah, they, it's a fun area. Yeah, yeah they call it Doco. Doco Commons. They, yeah. yeah, they they moved it 
they wanted the Kings to be downtown, the Melrose fixture on the Sacramento downtown area. Because where was Arco at before? It was, uh, it's it's like up north. Yeah, it's kind of pushed. Okay. Yeah, yeah, in the back. You know where Natomas is? Yeah, I used to live in Natomas. You live in Natomas? I used to. Used oh, to. I work yeah. in Natomas. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, that was like the hood kind of a little bit, right? Yeah, I wasn't gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That's he okay. Did. Sorry. 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 He did. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's up, up a little bit north. Yeah. 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 Now they're trying to figure out what to do with that. Site. You know, I gotta say though, I love the new arena. It's I nice. Went, I went there for Sorry. the first time I went there was when the Jonas Brothers came for their first tour, and we're actually going tomorrow to go see the Jonas Brothers. You're there. going to Sacramento? Tomorrow? Yeah. Nice. Wow. So, and actually, we met, uh, or I didn't just meet them there, but we had saw uh, Jaden there too. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, back in 2019 or something like that. Um, but that arena compared to Arco Arena is so much nicer, man. It's pretty sweet. I feel like every spot in there is is really nice. It's It feels smaller. Yeah. When, it's, and like every, it's more intimate. It, 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 it feels, intimate, it feels yeah. like even when you're high up, yeah. you mm -hmm. still have a good yeah. look at the floor. I went to see Iron Maiden there. It was oh, nice. how was yeah. That? yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, I got to hang out with Deftones there that day. Nice. <laughs> Are you excited for uh, Joe Bros? Oh, dude, I'm so stoked. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going? No, I'm not going. Uh, I, I wish I were going. <laughs> He's like, I, I'm not a loser. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I never know about, and I don't know if I'm like just, I'm just out of the loop or something. I never know about concerts or concert tickets or anything until it's like, oh, the, you know, it's the day. Taylor Swift sold out today. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Taylor Swift is kind of a hard one. Cause like, She's insane. Yeah, you would never get those tickets unless you were buying them eight years in advance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What are some of your music influences? Ooh, good question. Um, Taylor Swift. So, well, I, hey, I'm a big Swifty, all right? <laughs> okay. I, I'll okay. say, I'll put is it that on what her fans are called, Swifties? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah okay. I'll put it on the record, man. Nice. I am. I love Taylor Swift. Um, She's okay. Yeah, yeah, you know you've made. I love it. her. Yeah. I love her songs when I don't know that it's her. I'm like, oh shit, this is dope. <laughs> like, like, like this Taylor Swift song. I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> like, but like blank spaces, like uh, bad blood and shit like that. Oh, yeah. Kendrick. I'm like, like she has some bangers. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, She's an insane writer too. Also, I just only think with rappers. <laughs> <laughs> the only songs with rappers. Like, you, know what I, cool. okay. yeah, you, you know what I appreciate about Taylor Swift is she's not even from the area where like country is born. She's uh -huh. like from like Pennsylvania or something. I think she grew like up that, right? outside yeah. of Philly or something. Yeah, yeah. outside of Philly. She's on the East Coast and she migrated like I think to Memphis because she was like, Mom, I really want to be a country music artist. Yeah. I respect that a lot, actually. Yeah. Like, it never does country music. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also she's like re recording all these albums. That's yeah. so insane. She wanted like, her oh, to, back. to get her master's. She wanted yeah. her master's to, back. Yeah. To just like, oh. oh, I'll just redo it then. That what? That's insane. And they're like they're like being streamed like crazy too. So it's like yeah. super successful. Just deciding to do all the songs all over again. It's like I just think it's so inspirational. Well, it's a genius idea. Yeah. Because yeah. I was explaining to my dad, and for people who don't know this, um, the reason she re-records her masters is because, you know, the old label owns that stuff. Yep. She's a writer on 90 to, or probably 100% of these songs, right? So if she re-records it, she has the masters to those cover versions, but she, all the money that the writing goes to, to the original ones, goes right back to her. Yep. So she gets everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like the perfect loophole. Yeah. Um, on a very lesser level, Ashanti was doing the same thing, but like lesser level. Like she's like, okay, yeah. I'm like, more more musicians need to do this thing. I mean, like, yeah. like Lil Wayne could probably do that for like all his fucking shit. Yeah, you know, but it, at some point it would get oversaturated and people would be like, stop. Yeah. Someone had asked Ashanti's producer like why he didn't just give uh, his master the masters to his artists, and he said, here's the thing. I'm, I produced these beats. I made these, you know, he didn't just like, you know, um, sign a bunch of paperwork and hand it off. He, I put real time in the studio. So I don't make money on stage. They make money on stage. Mm. Like Ashanti can go on tour and probably make a million in a year. I don't get to do that. So like, this is how I make my money is my radio plays and stuff. So I'm like, all right, that's kind of fair. But Taylor Swift, you know, She's musically talented. She plays the guitar. She can she technically can make her own shit. So you know what I mean? Like I, I think that's a little different too. Was, yeah. was, versus so, Taylor. Sorry. Not to say that one's more talented <laughs> yeah, than another. Yeah. So the, Taylor Swift, one of the music. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Yeah. Taylor, I, uh, Taylor, Taylor, Swift. Taylor Swift. I like a lot of types of music. So when yeah. I first started playing um, any kind of music, my m me and my brothers were, um, gosh, I think I was like nine. Maybe I was like 10 or something like mm -hmm. that. But that means my youngest brother, Jaden, who's a drummer now, he was five. Oh, that's and what you meant by Jaden. Yes. I thought oh, you were talking I'm about Jaden Smith. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. To interrupt. No one talks about Jaden Smith. 
name the people that are in the color your band, the Color Wild. Yeah, so you were in this band. That's a cool ass name, though. By the thanks, way. thank you. Super um, cool. Very, very cool name. Yeah, we lie about. We always say it was like a poem. It was like I always said it was like an Edgar Allan Poe poem, and I just I made it up. Yeah, <laughs> not true. It's yeah. not true. We just picked it. Thought it sounded cool. But so the, um, my brother Kyle, he's uh, he's always been our front man. So he's a he's a singer. He's super talented. Um, our youngest brother Jaden is a drummer. Mm. So that's the Jaden. And then uh, our friend Josh, we, we met him in high school, and he's, he's a guitar player. Then I play keys and I sing. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so now with that being said, go ahead. <laughs> what was the question? Uh, who your influences are. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, so, yeah, when we were younger, we, we started as a classic rock cover band. Oh, okay. So our first song we ever did was You Shook Me All Night Long by ACDC. Nice. Kyle was like seven. <laughs> nice. He was seven, and it was so much fun. So we learned a bunch of stuff. Um, I've kind, I kind of like burned out uh, on classic rock a little bit. I kind yeah. of got a little over it. But then um, I started playing trumpet which took me to trombone and um i went to school for jazz yeah. so oh, that's that's when i got my bachelor's degree was at, uh, i moved to sacramento and studied jazz there so i'm super super um influenced by just like imp improvisational art in general mm -hmm. um but jazz music is like where i kind of found like a passion for for creation and like making anything at all i think is like studying jazz um and then i kind of got more into kind of the itch of writing pop music because of artists like taylor swift and I always, oh man, I always really liked, uh, I always really liked Katy Perry too. Yes. Yeah. I, I always liked Katy Perry. Yeah. Um, and like, there was like a wave in like 2011, mm -hmm. 2012 mm -hmm. of like Bruno was doing a bunch of stuff and yep. Katy Perry and, yep. Uh, yep. and pink. Pink yeah. was, yep. I had a Jeep, a 98 Grand Cherokee <laughs> and she, uh, and, uh, California girls came out mm -hmm. and, uh, it was the, um, in my Jeep. Uh -huh. yeah. And I'd always honk with it. Uh, <laughs> so, I was like the right place at the right time. That's awesome. Um, so I, I fell in love with pop music, but I was I don't feel like I was good at writing it then. So we were still kind of doing this kind of like trying to do an edgier kind of um, indie thing, like alternative kind of darker music right. at the time. Was it, is it fair to say that when The Color Wild was kind of in its younger years, you guys had a big Neon Trees influence or... Yeah, maybe Walk the Moon. Walk the Moon, a little sorry. closer. That's what I mean. um, Yeah, we loved, we loved Walk the Moon and still do. Yeah. Um, and then a couple years in, we kind of got influenced by the 1975. Yeah. And yeah. Um, my brother really loves, um, gosh, Laney. Uh -huh. Laney's another great band. Uh, and then what's the other one? Uh, oh, Band Camino. Band Camino. Band Camino. Yeah, yeah. We're like big ones. I'm getting into them now. Yeah, me too, a that's, little bit. Yeah. I'm a little late to them, Yeah, I feel me like. too. But I feel like they're on like a, new, a different rise now. Like they. I was going to say that because all of a sudden everyone's talking about the band Camino. Yeah. Like they've been listening to them for years. And I'm yeah, like, would, this is kind of like the same thing as <laughs> um, like whenever like Alabama Shakes oh, yeah. won the Grammy. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, well, you, you've never heard of them? And it's like, no, I haven't heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I just heard about them today. They, Sorry. Just, they just won a Grammy? No, when they won a Grammy like a few years ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. It was Alabama like nobody Shakes. had like yeah. ever talked about them. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. all of a sudden, everyone, like all of our friends they were like, up. we yeah. were fans of them forever. Yeah, like like yeah. I've never heard you talk about them. When ever. Kanye was complaining about when Beyonce didn't win the Grammy uh -huh. and the guy who won like played like 14 in instruments, stuff like that. It was like, mm -hmm. how have you never heard about this guy? And I haven't heard nothing about him since. Yeah. I don't even remember his name. Yeah, but. Oh, oh, I wonder. Um, Rob Glasper? I love Robert Glasper. He's great. Maybe Jacob yeah, Collier. Robert Glasper. Maybe the person. Amazing. Oh, he didn't win the Grammy, did he? Jacob Collier's got a couple Grammys, but I don't know in yeah, what. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Who knows? Um, but yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, and then also like when, when we were growing up, my first concert I ever went to was Backstreet Boys. Awesome. So I'm like, I'm kind of into like I've always loved boy band music. Yes. Um, yes. Which is it, like I still I still think it's so good. I still think it's so good. I still listen to it. Yeah, sure, I man. Too. And and like it's kind of funny to see them now because they're you know they're like older. Like, some of them are like fifty. They're like grown men. Yeah, 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 grown men with like kids and families and stuff. But they still do it and and like in sync too have you ever seen the videos of the guys in in sync they'll be at like uh disney world mm -hmm. um and they'll like do the choreo I, from, yeah, yeah. like from yeah. Like my heart and, yeah Ooh, man. man joey yeah they used to be doing yeah. backflips and everything on stage oh, like man. so yeah. acrobatic yeah and it's it's, it's so weird Especially like what was the big dude uh the big guy from in sync joey fatone. joey fatone seeing him like now a little bit more overweight at uh and um, practical jokers as like doing i don't know if you ever saw that yeah, yeah, you ever yeah. see that <laughs> yeah i think so <laughs> just seeing him like looking like a dad now doing yeah. you know impractical joker shit you know it's funny to see like the in sync guys 
like those all all those guys used to be heartthrobs. Yeah, mm. yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Exactly. And you're like, you guys could be my uncles. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean. You guys it's look a like my uncles. Yeah. Another thing that I just saw recently: Tony Hawk with a cane. Cane. Yeah. No Yo. way. Yeah. yeah. Tony yeah. Hawk with a cane. Oh, Tony he hurt himself. Is, well, oh, he broke up. his uh, his femur. Yeah, he's messed up. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. So, okay. I started because ESPN always plays like X sports stuff, like the sure. X game stuff, like late at night. And so I just see like Tony Hawk, like with gray hair. I'm just like, dude, you're old. Like, oh my. Like, it's like you always picture him in a board. Board, yeah, like, yeah. I always picture him on the board, and then like he's like, oh, he's a young dude, and then he's like, you see his old face. I'm just like, oh my, oh my, yeah, oh no, my he, god, you no, know, gray hair. He's yeah. fragile. Like Ryan Sheckler is gonna be there yeah. next. Like, we're we're that, gonna be there that, next. <laughs> Tony and Tony Hawk's always getting recognized, yeah, yeah. but but not recognized. Oh, have it, you seen his Twitter handle? Oh thing? my gosh, it's always Fucking people hilarious. like in the elevators saying like, hey, you know, I, I gotta say, you look a lot like Tony Hawk, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, he is Tony Hawk, but he doesn't look like Tony Hawk, but wow. he does. Yeah, I think that's so funny. I got a question on you on that. We're on this topic on like yeah. stuff we grew up with how much does nostalgia play and like part of like influence for you in music oh that's a great question um i i think a lot so mm -hmm. right now like what i'm really into i'm really drawn to music that um tries to take like old older textures and older like uh sound design um one great example is a band called bleachers it's jack oh, yeah, we were yeah. just listening to them while setting up yeah so um all of his sound design and all the stuff he uses so much stuff from the 80s and 90s but none of it feels like 80s music it feels very now yeah. and very here but it feels like In timeless to me somehow this this song that was written yesterday feels like it's been around for 30 years and that yes. excites me i think it's so cool if you could ever crack that code and yeah. just make something that's like timeless like that sure but but appeals to so many different genres because there's like musical so much musical value and like instrumental value to what he's doing mm -hmm. yeah. and like how how much thought he puts into the music i think it's so cool and so i like that stuff now because i like uh, i like how people can manufacture nostalgia but it still feels like as good it doesn't feel artificial to me and it feels new because that's the thing i ask because that's why i asked what your musical influences earlier and 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 if nostalgia plays a part because i noticed some people they take nostalgia and they kind of want to recreate that same mm -hmm. thing or that same feeling in their in their art yeah and then there's always a kind of you know it's the same inspired by something nostalgic but they kind of want to you know, re do something that sounds way, you know, yeah. kind of like Mitch Hedberg had a joke about like, um, I'm bringing comedy in this. No, no, okay. He has a joke about how like movies that are inspired by yeah. are weird. Like, you know, uh, uh, I wrote a movie about a, a, a guy who kills somebody, but I was inspired by that, by a sandwich. Like, you, know? <laughs> <laughs> like you take it to a whole different yeah, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like ADD thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Give him a sandwich <laughs> to murder. He like, yeah. I can that. break it down to you, but, <laughs> yeah. but it was, in that fast of a, yeah. a thing. I also, I also think like with uh, writing music and maybe you feel this way. Sometimes I feel like a fear of like trying to capture nostalgia. That's like inspired by like bleachers or like oh, uh, sure. walk the moon. You said you used to kind of make me feel that way. Or I was like, man, I want to do what they're doing. Yeah. And I 75, I want to do what they're doing. But then once they've done it and it takes you the amount of time it, it takes to like learn how to do that. You don't want to be a cut. No, you're, you're now you're, you're over. It's over. It's over. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in that was trying to like room five. totally. So it's like, okay, well, I think you guys sound amazing though. I, I wouldn't have known that it was a Maroon 5 influence, but I think you guys do it. You sound like that. you, I think. Appreciate me. it. Um, but it's like, it's so scary to to almost feel like, oh man, I'm, I might run out of time to yeah. capture this. So yes. I've been trying to like crack a code in my head of like, what is it that actually does feel nostalgic? Because mm. if these trends are constantly going and they're always changing, there's got to be something there that is the, like the, the DNA of what makes it like pull at something yeah. for you. Do you get, does that get tiring though? Because like for me, I was in the exact same space of like, we were, we were trying to mimic Maroon 5 kind of, you know what I mean? And it's like, we're writing these songs and they were great. But by the time, you know, we found something that's kind of related to payphone or something, uh. they were on to animals, you know what I mean? Or they were on to sugar and you're like, cool. And like recently wrote something that kind of had that sugar vibe. And I'm like, this is a great song, mm. but I don't think in today's world, this would be. Is this what this kind of is like for, cause like, I remember we did a show the other day and, uh, I was asking him about a new joke that I have in mind. It's like, I, I don't want to sound like someone else. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cause it sounded similar to Al Madrigal's joke, Who? but you said, yeah, exactly. You said, no, you said it wasn't, it was a different joke. Remember? Oh yeah. yeah cause yeah. it's like, uh, it just, I try to not, not like yeah. do something that's already, you know, do you ever have that? Like, is that what you're talking about with a the, little bit? Yeah. I, and I think that like, sometimes that's contributed to burnout for me in certain musical projects is like all the chase, the constant chase yeah. of like. Yeah. Trying to, Cause trying you want to be different, also stand out, but I know, you know, but you have to yeah. be aware of like what's, yeah. what's going on. And so right, like right now to answer your question and yours, I think it, it, it doesn't tire me to like think about it uh -huh. because I love, I love thinking about like what makes music 
happen and like what makes us feel anything because it's just sound right, right. Like it's just random sound that we it's assigned true. we assigned feeling to yeah i tell it to my students too it's like what you do with with uh like the ink on the page and and the stuff is like what makes it feel like anything right and so for me i've been thinking a lot about like how do how do lyrics contribute to this and like mm -hmm. just melodic a direction and design because if like production is going to change every five ten years anyway and even faster two three years right. if it's always changing there's got to be something that makes us feel like it's a, the end credits of a movie or something like right. that right. or like it makes us remember childhood and and like feel that happy sadness which is nostalgia mm -hmm. it's like happy sadness there's like something there that we say and so i think lyrics are like the the secret that's like where i'm trying to go sure. is, is like letting the genre be like what i feel like creating at the time but like trying to root my lyrics in, in like what I feel because and, and like what maybe other people feel. Nice. Yeah, yeah. This this also kind of ties into that. You just mentioned genre. Do you ever feel trapped in the genre or do you like to play around? Ooh. With, ooh. Yeah. Somebody somebody once said that like being in a band is, is a, like even if it's a box that you want to be in, it's a box. Yeah. Like so sometimes I think like being in a band with like a specific branding can definitely feel limiting. Mm -hmm. I think that doing my solo stuff, I don't feel trapped at all mm. um i do feel like very aware that the that i'm like setting up a sound and like setting kind of a, a style and a genre and kind of a brand for like the stuff that i make and i feel aware of that but i don't feel trapped by that because i feel because there's so much flexibility in being a solo artist i feel that i have flexibility if i want to switch it up and i kind of do so like well, well i was gonna say that's like do you guys remember uh garth brooks in the 90s mm -hmm. where he was yeah. like the biggest country yep. music mm -hmm. star yep and he felt trapped that he couldn't do anything that wasn't country so he created an alter ego so yep. he could make other music <laughs> yeah. yeah like he he had an emo wig and he, he went by the name chris Gaines mm -hmm. and put out a whole album just so he could make music that wasn't country yeah yeah I mean, Backstreet Boys, what's his name, did that too. Um, uh, what's his name? He became like a metal band, right? Yeah, a metal, yeah. Uh, yeah. like a, uh, you know, a um, death know, Great like that, yeah. You know, comedian Harlan Williams? You, you know who that is? Oh, yeah. Harlan yeah. Williams? Yeah, yeah you, you, you do? I think I do, yeah. Yeah, he's in uh, Half Baked. He's the guy that gets locked up. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, used to, he used to go to like, like smaller towns and uh, use a different name to get on like comedy shows. Yeah. <laughs> so he could try out new material. Oh, that's cool. Because <laughs> he says once people know you yeah. and they know you for that, it kind of, yeah. They, yeah. they yeah. laugh they Just laugh pain. for whatever. Yeah. 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 Music Soul Child did that too. Yeah. He, uh, because he like he was writing all these sad songs r&b songs yeah. stuff like that he created an alternate uh person that we called the, like yeah. the, the hustle and mm -hmm. everybody was like what the hell yeah and he was trying to rap and stuff yeah. like that and then i remember he went on the breakfast club and it just like shitted on him the whole time like why don't you do the classics he was like I, I, he was like, i can't do nothing else he like, was like nobody wants to hear you rap sir he, he was yeah, he literally said that he was like he's I, I can't be like upbeat i always gotta be sad i always gotta sing about love oh you know i can't make a party jam remember, like, um uh what's his name Bo uh billy bob thornton had, yeah. a, had a music uh, group at one point yep, and he, yep. he went to the interview he was like I don't want you to ask about my movies okay <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that, actually that's a great point though like the what you're talking about like you said uh, I can't do love songs or yeah. like I, I, I gotta only do love songs yeah. I do feel like that's maybe a limiting thing too especially yeah. when you're in a group is that like the band that I've been in um, the color wild we've always been really like jumpy and happy and dancey on stage right. okay similar to like kind of like your guys yeah. vibe um, w which is hard if you want to write about anything that's like dark or, yeah. or difficult yeah. to, to go through because also the other thing I'm conscious of is like when I'm writing for that group if I want to talk about like my anxiety or like my issues with whatever mm -hmm. Kyle's singing about it so like I got to put Kyle through that every day like that we go perform oh, yeah. he's got to live that when he sings it right and so like that's a, that's a good you, point. Which I think is there is ever a, a <clears throat> moment where you write something and say he like his voice is perfect for it though, right? And he's like, bro, I don't feel this. Like this can't, Ooh. I can't, I don't think we should do this song because I can't, I can't put can't myself into this. Out. I don't think Kyle's ever been that way. He's always been so flexible with, with like what, what you give him mm -hmm. he he puts his spin on like melodic choices and also delivery right because kyle's a great performer right he's he's incredible i think he's the best one in our group like on stage so he always has a lot to say about like how he wants to perform something but he always has like given a lot of autonomy to me for mm -hmm. lyric choices like always even since we were like younger and i was writing my first couple songs the way you guys write is really interesting too um you were there for that i was okay so yeah i wanted to talk about this because well, actually, I'll take a step back. Um, I found the way I found these guys, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think I found you guys. 
on YouTube or Instagram first. Okay. Something and I had to. Look oh, it was up. one of those things. Wild things. Okay. That's oh, the yeah, first yeah. song I ever heard. Saw the music video and I think these guys are fucking famous, right? So I'm like, <laughs> it's a Zach Porter thing. I'm like, oh, I'm freaking out. These guys are cool. <laughs> yeah. They're from the Bay. And then um, I DM. Probably Jaden. Jaden. Yeah. Yeah. It's a red flag when they DM you right away. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey, man. You what? No. Hey, man, you guys want to hang out? <laughs> no, yeah. But uh, he you want to write together? <laughs> so he found out. He was like, he found out I worked at the Disney Museum at the time. Oh, okay. And he was like, he's a big Disney guy. We all. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah you guys, okay. Or you guys are all our big, big Disney guys. Big Disney family. Um, and I was like, yo, bring the band. I'll get you guys in for free. And so him and his girlfriend at the time uh, came, got them free tickets, got them lunch and stuff like that. And um, so, you know, it was cool. And then when I got to meet all of you guys is when he invited me to come into the studio yeah. with you guys for breaking down my walls. Sorry, by the good job on taking advantage of uh, the stalker and uh, getting where you could. Out. Well, I wish I went to the Disney thing. I never did. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get to go. Oh, I, I couldn't make it. You can still go. I mean, it's not as fun without You got to try to sneak me in the back. Of but I, 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 dude, I love. No, the, yeah. that security is. Is it crazy? Yeah. I bet. Bro, yeah. It's the mouse, man. Bro. The mouse doesn't <laughs> right. play. No, at no. All. The suits come out. And, you know, you're, yeah. It was so funny. Yeah. When they fired me, yeah. it was like, I was cool with all the security guards. Yeah. And that morning, they were just like, you're out. Dude, I'm lit. sorry you got fired. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. It was, uh, I deserved it. Yeah. Okay. But anyways. <laughs> once you get fired? Once I, uh, well, I got, I gave away, I got fired for giving away a two day old Caesar salad. But oh, oh I heard this story. That's right. Yeah, yeah, but there was more to it. Me and my boss did not get along. I, I was also a severe alcoholic, and so yeah, I had a lot of fuck up things. In in hindsight, I deserved it. Anyways, okay. um, but so I get to go to the studio with you guys, and you guys are writing fast, though. You guys write like almost day of when you guys go to the studio. I yeah, oh, I do. I for sure do. You I even even now, like even with my own stuff, it's. I I feel like deadlines help me like in a big uh -huh. way. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, the, like the yeah. pressure of it kind of gets it gets it done yes. for me. I get like stuck in a rut that I yeah. cannot get out of. Like the first verse that I write is probably going to be on the record because right. I I can't like get outside of that. Mm -hmm. But then it's always I always leave the second verse open or like the pre-choruses. I would just wait. Yeah. And I I don't know what it is. Like there was one I just didn't want. Well, you know Elliot. Yes. Um, Elliot Polakoff. He's a great producer down in yeah. LA. Um, he's also in the band Cemetery Son. Yes. Great band. Shout out Elliot. He's amazing. But I went down there and um, he had an opportunity to get me into this uh, studio with Jason Joshua. Do you know okay. Jason? Uh, no. He, oh man, he's done so many things. Um, but like, I think one of the coolest things is that he uh, mixed single ladies. That's awesome. Which oh, is crazy. Yeah. 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 Like it's like, it, that's like one of very many things. just the first thing I remember. But he has this studio and like Jack Harlow's name is on the wall and right. like all these people come in. Is that and the it's, one where you did the vocals for? Yeah, yeah, with uh, with his company now, right? Him and the girl. That's right. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, never yeah. happened, is what they call it. Yeah. But um, dude, that studio changed my life because I I when he told me like, hey, we, we can get in there and it's gonna be like there was like an opening or whatever. It's gonna be seven thirty and it's like six fifty at the time and I knew I had like forty minutes to get it done. I had no lyrics done on that that song. Like maybe a little bit of it. But what he song said, is this? Uh, that was the song was um. Oh gosh, uh, not med. Yeah, maybe medication. 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 Maybe medication. Okay. Uh, no, maybe not medication. The, there's another one I haven't released yet. It's called uh, Habits. Okay. It's called Habits. Okay. But um, Habits is coming out later this year. But uh, so he said, "Yeah, you got like 40 minutes, man." I said, "I don't have any lyrics." He goes, "Well, you better go outside. Like, go 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 work on that." He said, "It'll be fine. It's gonna be great." I was like, "Dude, I don't think it's gonna be fine." Because <laughs> I then all of a sudden I'm like, "Shit, this guy is like a big deal." I don't even know if Jason's gonna be there. He wasn't. It ended up being Rachel, and um, I got it done though, like on the car ride there and that i think you went to a session where i did that too it's like something yep. about like i'm running out of time mm -hmm. yeah it makes it, me make decisions yeah it was the it was when we went to his parents house mm -hmm. to record in the garage and that's yep. actually where we recorded miracle oh sweet um and yeah it was interesting so i, I go in I, I meet the guys and at this particular one when it was in the garage that was the second time i was with them it was interesting to see they had like some ideas in the hotel room and then we all dip and it was like very small ideas mm -hmm. and i'm tripping out too because my band's the complete opposite we have we do so much pre-production mm -hmm. so i'll write a full song out and then i'll send it to my drummer and david will 
redo the drums. Nando will come over, redo the guitars. And just to get a better feel of what we want, we might even play the song live a couple times for sure before we go record it. Um, <clears throat> so it tripped me out that like, you guys didn't do that, and I was like, mm. I was like, so nervous. So How quick, is this quick, gonna? Yeah. <laughs> quick question on that. Now, since we've been doing this podcast, I guess every every I see everyone has a different process. What comes first, lyrics or music? Uh, I think it's like the uh, melodic idea. Okay, like a, a, a like just like a, a the sound of like notes happening. Like I'll think, oh, that mm. sounds kind of cool, or like mm. maybe one lyric, like mm. one lyric with a melodic idea. But it it's easier for me to write melodies and melodies first. Because yeah. I've heard of uh, a, uh, one of my favorite bands. They they used to like basically hum out and do gibberish mm -hmm. and then turn that into lyrics yeah 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 that's yeah. that's that, a normal thing that's kind of similar i but again i get like stuck like mm -hmm. i actually feel like that's a big flaw of mine as a writer is mm -hmm. that that first idea i'm not good at coming up with the next idea next idea next idea next idea lyric ideas i can flip around pretty good do you, like, do you write poetry hard. no okay i did in high school a little bit okay okay i was in a poetry competition are, are you a procrastinator did you win i got fifth place okay okay that's very proud bad. though yeah. nice nice yeah. Yeah. are you a procrastinator like that's that why you like uh like i'm a recovering procrastinator <laughs> same, same i'm dude. in recovery right now i'm like working me, on like while I'm like, I'm like oh yeah like i remember uh one of my teachers like in college she was always saying like you know you're doing really good right here but it's kind of like you need to like work a lot i'm like i just wrote this last night lady like oh, yeah. <laughs> you're expecting all this out of me i'm like i wrote this i finished this at 6 a.m well yeah. it's, it's and, and it could also be is it because because, I mean, is it procrastination or is it because you kind of have a, um, you know, like a, a perfectionist thing with your art? Because that, that plays a big part of it, too. I think like I think like the procrastination on finishing lyrics or ideas is I do have faith that I'm going to get it done. Yeah. But Absolutely. like that's yeah. dangerous. Yeah. That's yes. like a really dangerous yes. way to live. Yeah. yeah. It's it dangerous to live that way. And it, like in college, I, I used to get a little bit chewed out Yeah. because um, I'd like show up late and I'd get the stuff done. And yeah. like I'd understand the theory, I'd understand what's going on. But it was never the best. It was never satisfying work yeah. for me because like I, I wasn't doing the best I could do. On edge. It was, yeah. And it was yeah. always yeah. last minute and you'd be stressed. You'd be like, if, yeah. like, if I would have started this earlier, I could have did it. But then he was like, well I got it done that's yeah. and that's what being a procrastinator like you live like kind of like on that like fuck I'm so stressed out yep. but you know you're going to get it done at this last minute and you kind of plan before it but it just some like writers for sure. like, this like, is why deadlines are so important yeah. right? for a lot of people yeah sure. and and like even if you like get, like get an A so to speak and like you you crush it you do the thing like now the memory of doing it yeah. was not joyful like it wasn't yep. right. it wasn't yep. a good feeling stressful at all. Right. Yeah. yeah and it's yeah, like yeah. you kind of walk out and like wipe the sweat from yeah. your brow and you're like <laughs> you, have you gotten thing. have you gotten better at kind of planning that out now or is it still happen i think so because i'm a teacher now ah. so so now now i have to <laughs> i just got them show. excited i have to like show are you guys teachers yeah. he's like these guys right oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nice um, so now i have to you. show and try to lead by example because i can't tell kids like you know practice like do your stuff you're supposed to do yeah. and then like show up and i don't have the music printed out i don't have my shit together right, yeah. right. i gotta get it together yeah so i think i'm better now because my job requires me to to be yeah. and i do think that trickles into like my passion projects like writing music and stuff right i want to ask you about this you also you you um you sent it on the notes mm -hmm. um you opened for jesse mccartney yeah oh wow yeah he was, was that? he was really nice that was a couple years ago ah oh, god i don't know what year that was maybe like the end of 2018 uh he was super nice i remember his manager was like really like t -t 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 super by the book but again yep. like super pleasant person yep. and um he just i don't know he we we didn't get to talk to him a whole lot but he was so confident on stage and i remember i loved jesse mccartney when i was like growing up yeah i don't know how old jesse mccartney is 38 he was i'm like, gonna guess 37 30, 30, he was like a year older than us when i'm i mean oh maybe 34 35 Let's go 33. Let's go 33. Yeah. See where it goes. Hey, right, 29. Hey, you guys ready? Hey, yep. I don't know. I want 36. 30. Oh, oh, man. oh, we wow. should save 38. I know. I have so it's three years I older. Than, three years okay. older than me. Well, then. 33. Price is right rules. Well, how, you didn't go over. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 29. <laughs> You're 29. Okay, 29. so we're okay. almost the same. Okay, I'm yeah. 28. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing it when, like Youngin. he was huge back when like. 2000 what 2004 2005 is that what yeah oh out? my gosh eight eight around 2008 two. that would scare me though like that that's why i'm like so impressed with him being so confident on stage doing his thing it's yeah. kind of inspiring to me now because he was like he was like a heartthrob yeah right. and he was like a young like teenager like teenage boy doing his thing on all these magazines and like in all these shows he's on disney channel and doing yeah. all this stuff yep. and then like now to go back and be in your 30s which like now i'm i'm almost there so i can relate to that and to like do these old songs i wonder like 
mentally and like emotionally, what do you have to like reconcile? Like, and like, what do you have to deal with when you're like revisiting yeah. who you were, but now you're like this more as developed older person. Yeah. As an adult. Does and it like, help that he already had hit songs though? Well, he wrote hell of other for sure. hits for other people he too, did, right? He did. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know how much he did for like as much as we know. We know the one. He's written uh, for Taylor Le Swift though, right? No, I don't know or about am I that. mistaken on that? Yeah, no, it's Leona Lewis, him and Ryan Tedder wrote, um, that the one her don't tell me big, bleeding love bleeding love no yeah. way yeah. oh he did yeah. wow that's on, yeah that's, that's, on such, a good song. that's such a good um, song yeah. you guys are totally over you know oh, shit. just skipping through his work in law and order man <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um okay so so yeah I, I bet it helps to have like sure. beautiful soul to like fall back that's on i feel I, like like you can come back and say like uh, it might have been a traumatic time at disney but like yeah, I have beautiful soul, and that sold a million records. I would just be nervous I that 16. I don't. I, I just would worry that I'm not as good looking as I was, like when when yeah. I was like really, yeah. really super, yeah, super yeah. famous. And I, like, they're the trolling top. him right now on on TikTok, oh, which so sucks. unfair. I saw that really? video, but I yeah. think that's. I feel like it's been edited. No, it's real. Is it real? Yeah, yeah. He looks like that, but it that's look. Okay. But that he still looks great. He still looks great. Yeah. They trolling um, this guy? Yeah, they're trolling him. Trolling that guy? No, I know, right? He still has a lot of acne. Oh, okay. Let me see. Yeah. Look, look. There you go. Can you put it on the screen, yeah. please? Uh, uh, no. Oh, you. Oh, yeah, I, thought you yeah, uh, yeah. I thought you were saying. Let me <laughs> no, see. No, no, no. <laughs> Somebody look up, dude. Look over here. <laughs> um, I. Okay. Yeah. Couldn't get my eyes off of it. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so let's go. We we don't have too yeah, much yeah. time left. Okay. Um, but I do want to go to the Color Wild. It's kind of you know on this hiatus. You're doing your solo stuff. Now. You come out with if you want to leave. Yeah. Right. Is that what it's called? I'm sorry. That is what I'm it's on called. the Color Wild page it. now. Um, but you come out with that. Great fucking song, by the way. Thanks, man. Um, what What is this song about, technically? Because, I mean, I feel when I heard it, I kind of put it into, like, I don't know why it took me to, like, band relationships and stuff oh, like that. Where, like, I remember we had a, uh, a falling out with our old drummers back in the day and stuff. And we're, we're all good now, you know what I mean? But, like, you, you I kind of put it into that perspective. Like, Interesting. damn. And I think it kind of came... I won't lie. I think it came from when I saw you guys' post, like the happy eight years. I was wondering if you guys broke up, but then oh, yeah. I kind of put that into like my side and I was like, oh, like I feel like this is kind of about this, but what is it really about? What do you... Um, so if you want to leave, uh, is I, I was walking to Target. I love Target. Okay, yeah, I love yeah. Target. Yeah, man. I love so, I hate Target. I always get robbed there. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you go looking for like one thing yeah, from yeah. now ten. Yeah. But um, I was walking to Target and I had this idea of, of like, that song is about people in my life. It's multiple people. It's not sure. just one person. Um, and it's that one actually is not band related at all to, for okay. me, from, from my perspective. But that's interesting that it went there for you. But it it's people that are close to me, like in family and in like extended family that I felt like were not only like, uh, it was like a one foot in one foot out the door. Sure. Um, and I think that there are even people that kind of weaponize leaving. Like I, you know, you know, I'll kind of paraphrase, but like be kind to me or else like I'm gone. Yeah. Mm. You know? And like, I, you should always be kind to people, but I'm just saying like, right. right. That's like a, a paraphrasing of it. But it was kind of this thing of like, if you do, if you don't want to be all the way here mm -hmm. for me, like as like either a family member or a friend or just like a person that I confide in, you don't have to be right. You can go. And that like, right. that's, that's totally fine. But I can't wait around for you to do that to like right. decide. Right. So just decide. Right. And there's multiple people that have like varying levels of that for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm sure there's been ways that I haven't been all the way there for people, but I do feel like you have to like protect your own, your own heart sometimes sure. and just be honest and say like, you know, I love you. I care about you, but you know, like you don't, you don't seem to be like committed to just even answering a phone call or something right. like that. So yeah. that's, well, you're fine. a family man too now. So totally. much is, that's got to have changed your perspective on everything. Absolutely. Cause now you don't need 17 friends. You yeah. Know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, sure. But also like, there's so much that I want to be for my daughters now that, right. um, that like, I can't, I can't be like not fully engaged, like with, yeah. with, with family. I feel like yeah. you got to be there and you have to like be all the way there. And even if like all the way there is like down here, it's like this level of commitment of what you can do. That's fine. But don't waver and don't like be in and yeah, out. That yeah. bothers me. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think being a, a married with like kids does, mm -hmm. does change that for sure. Yeah, it's gonna it influence it. definitely affects adult friendships. I kind of feel like 
you know, once you get, you're in a friend group, you're the one that gets married and you have children. There's one or two ways to go about keeping or not keeping your friends, right? There's the strategy of like, okay, well, all of you are now uncles and aunts. Yeah. Right. Come and visit your nephew yeah. Or, your, yeah. or your niece. Or, hey, I'm busy with the family. I'll see you guys another time. Yeah. It all depends on what that, you know, because uh, yeah. you may look around and feel like some of your friends are not necessarily child safe you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you, like, you have any friends, like <laughs> friends that aren't child safe yeah like that you know, oh man that you're like i'm cool like especially, I'll like, especially I'll with you but yeah. like maybe like friends of friends of family so like when we all go go to the house like our parents house our parents live in vacaville okay and so like go visit them um and like maybe some friends might roll through or something like that and you got to go like hey you know she's my daughter's right there or something like that because the Niners are on and like, uh, we're yeah, getting a little yeah, loose, yeah, yeah. you know, we're doing yeah. our thing. Yeah. Yes. But uh, yeah. that's that, that's like, that's all I got. But I also, I love that song because I, I do feel like it also makes me have to be accountable. Yeah. Because sure. I do feel like if you ask that of people, like to be consistent, whatever consistent is, just be consistent, you have to do that too. Yeah. yeah. And 100%. so like that, that is like a little thing that I've, I've found since putting that song out. I've had some people wonder if it's about them and reach out to me uh -huh. and it's not. But yeah. that's interesting yeah. that like they would think anything yeah. It's conscience. such a it's such a <laughs> Maybe, personal yeah, yeah. it's such a personal song. When I heard it for the first time, it was one of the most dare to say detailed emotions that I've ever heard from your well, camp. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, um, I cared about those lyrics a lot. So yeah, it's a lot. So and, and I think that's why. Not to say that the other songs didn't have you know feeling to them or anything, but it it was you know how sometimes. You hear your friend's songs, and you're like, oh, that's a, that's a great tune. Mm -hmm. You know, like it might be a great song too, but like you don't necessarily get emotion sometimes. And, and it, it, yeah. it happens. Um, but that song specifically, I was like, ooh, I related to it right away. Oh, wow, that means off a lot. Off the first listen. So like it's one of those where your, your lyrics captured that. And maybe also because you do put, you tend to put your vocals up in the mix a little higher. Okay. Am I correct to say that? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking more musician talk now. But. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, so I, I do I like to, that. I like to stack a lot of vocals because okay. I'm. I feel like I'm a singer first. Like that's my thing. Sure. And so I like that to be like a big part of the texture of, mm -hmm. of what I do. So we we do track like a lot of vocals. So I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, they like come out a little bit more. Sure. So what's the? What do you have coming up? You have. Sorry, I'm going to your Spotify again. But medication just came out. Medication came out. Um, I think I put that one out maybe like last month, and then I had one yep. since called Breaking Up. Breaking. Oh, I'm sorry. Just the the EP. Yeah, sort of. I've been I, okay. So I've been releasing them where like I just stack the previous releases with the new release, gotcha. and so it ends up every time I put out a new song, the next thing that auto plays is all my last stuff. Oh, nice. And so like that's dope. Wait, wait. wait. So like when I when I put out, so let's say I put out if you want to leave, uh -huh. right? And then the next song I do, let's say it's medication. I think it was. Yeah. I release it as a two song set. Okay. Medication and if you want to leave, and okay. then the next song I do, uh, I think it was maybe breaking up, breaking okay. up, and then also medication and if you want to leave, so that every time I release a new release, so they get the last thing. They get the last thing, oh, and so they're like forced back into my catalog instead of. Nice. That is fucking genius. Instead dude. of Spotify, Mc kind of like pushing them somewhere yeah. else. Miguel that, was doing that. He uh, yeah. Like he would I think like, Lizzo did it too. Yeah. He like put uh, a single out and then he would put like two other ones that eventually was becoming singles and make it like he's like, oh, I just drop like three new like uh, EPs or like <clears throat> or mixtapes uh -huh. and it just be like oh like these are previous singles that he like put together like in threes yeah. Yeah. so that it wouldn't like tire him out. Out, and then he released the whole album and then it was like oh these are from like about a year ago but like, oh shit he, and now he got a video too don't so, get upset so. if i steal that <laughs> no do it i, I, I think it's to. so fun i think <laughs> it's a plan. fucking genius a plan. idea there was and it like it paid off one time i i pitched um my song medication for like a playlist that i don't remember what playlist it was but it was like something let's say like car rides yep. right it was something like car, car rides and i thought it was a good fit and they they hit me back and said not a good fit for our playlist so sorry but we saw if you want to leave we actually think that's better yeah We'll and they that put one. that one on. That's there cool. And so, like, I think that it's paid off even in that little bit yeah. of just seeing that maybe people can get to know my stuff better just by having a little bit more access. Do to you it. follow oh. an artist, Nick D? Do you know who that Nick is? Nick D. Nick D. Or Connor Price? They're big no. TikTok artists. I, maybe I've come across Nick. Wait, wait, hold on. Look them up. I'll okay. give you after the interview. I'll I'll show you them. Um, they are huge independent artists, and they inspire me so much because they talk a lot about independent business too, and like how they grow, how they scale, and like yeah. what it means to be an independent artist. Mm -hmm. I think you would really benefit from them. They have a podcast too. Uh, That'd be great. Like, it's only like four episodes because they kind of stopped it. Um, but 
they t- they talk to a bunch of people about like how to grow in this scale and like what needs to be done from people that are actually doing it. They're doing 60 million streams yeah. independently just through TikTok. No paid ads, no nothing. You follow him a little bit? I follow. Dude, you're crazy on TikTok now. You got like I'm, so much stuff going all the time. It's I like, am obsessed. Yeah. Well, that's the next, that's kind of tied into the question I was going to ask you is aside from that, what's another thing you've done? Cause I like, you know, as an independent artist now, everyone has to put their shit out on their own and, you know, hope it gets clicks or whatever. What, aside from that, what, what else has worked for you to get your music out there? Um, for me, I feel like I feel extremely ordinary just like as a human being, like I have a family, I have a job, like I do my thing, I go to work, I come home and like, I, I love my life. Like I love it. I love the Niners. Like I, I do regular things and I like write in my bedroom that has like a whiteboard dry erase, you know, calendar in the corner. It's very, to me, very ordinary. And so I feel like now in solo stuff, I kind of want to lean into just who I am as a person without like the bells and whistles as much. Yeah. And so for me, what seems to be working is like when I just grab the guitar on a whim, come in from the garage, like grab the guitar and then just like do a verse of that song. And I just put it up and I don't think too much about it. Mm -hmm. I feel like that works for my, like whatever my demographic is. Yeah. They like seeing like a, a, in my opinion, regular, just super ordinary person Mm -hmm. playing their music and like putting it out there. Yeah. And I do feel like, yeah, I say this with love. You make me feel bad on TikTok because you're so good at it. Like you make you do so much stuff. So it reminds me, like, oh man, I should probably do this more. <laughs> I should probably do what Marcos is doing. Same, same, see, man. Same. I, yeah. I, yeah. I yeah. actually, and it's funny because yeah, I look at you the same way. Like I like your style of videos. Here's one thing I'll tell you. I'm jealous of you because you've always had an aesthetic. Oh wow. Our band has never had an aesthetic, and that's been a really hindering part of our growth. Um, because we're always, we're trying to change. We're like, we're trying to grow. And, and I don't know when we started working with Elliot, we, that's kind of when we decided to take it a little more rockish and oh, yeah. we're, we're trying, we're still doing pop rock, but it's not as pop as it used to be. Um, definitely going down the, the more pop punkish side, a little bit more in your face. Yeah. yeah we definitely, sure. you know, harder stuff. We introducing a little screaming and stuff like that. Um, potentially down the line, but nice. but been working on that. So, I mean, yeah, the aesthetic part I think is amazing, and that's something that I want. Yeah, yeah. See, that's their band. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at like the color wild. <laughs> but um, the aesthetic is is fire in some point. Well, thanks. So, have you ever heard of Bo Burnham? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because he, well, he's like the comedian slash like Random. musician that kind of a thing. So that's why I'm like, because he, he was talking about like hearing him and seeing him like an everyday kind of stuff, and he recorded like a whole uh, special for Netflix that was like in his house. Yeah. So I kind of yeah. see that you're like you're just playing like in your totally. living room and stuff. Like I do that. feel like you could just get a drink with that guy. Like yeah. you could just yeah. like hang out yeah. and yeah. just yeah. go get a sandwich. Yes. Yeah. And that's very appealing yeah. to like that to the masses. To, to, yeah. 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 I think so yeah. too. Because some people don't have like a you said ordinary yeah. uh-huh. and that is attractive like yeah, you know, yeah. and i don't do crazy numbers on tiktok or anything so I'm, i don't like it i don't know what like successful is to me but for, like for me i'm really liking that i just find people that seem to really want to stick with my music because they care about who i am or like they get sure. invested in, in like my family or something like that which i think is cool because i get to know them better right yeah. you right. know and you, I, I you like supporting like you know families you like supporting family men totally you know, and i like that I like getting to know other writers too. Right. Yeah. And I think that TikTok's been great for that. Right. Like for, right. at least for me, like, cause I kind of push is like, I like to write songs and I sit in my room and I write them and I play them. Right. And so like other people like that find me and then I find them and now I'm inspired by them. And it's like this community that you're just building over time. Right. Do you write the whole song or it's just like a last minute thing that you put all of a sudden that you got to put out? Um, like when I'm doing a little like video, I'm just fucking with you because you did like as you say you did stuff last minute. That's the only reason. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. I only I only ever do like a verse on TikTok because that's all I have. So, there you go. Yeah. Right, there you go. Yeah, I don't yeah, tell yeah, anybody yeah. that. Like, yeah. Well, also I, that's all people want to see too. Yeah, should and I, it's like a sample. So should like, I put this song out? Like, yeah, I couldn't if I wanted to. Like, yeah. I have nothing yet. Th- there's yeah. this rapper I'm following, and he just kind of, he does like a quick like thing like. 20 seconds of like and then he's always like should i put this out and mm-hmm. i'm just like and I, I looked him up on on like uh on like spotify and i'm just like yo dude where, where was that song like is it out or no, is it something that's, that's what's dangerous about that yeah. we, uh, nick d talks about this a lot too where it's like if you go viral with a snippet of a song mm-hmm. that's not recorded not out yet right you're fucked yeah because that's that song like especially as an independent artist and smaller artists like us you need every click you can get. Oh yeah. Right. So like, if you're like, oh man, I don't know if I should put this song out. It gets, you know, 11 million views or whatever. You're like, all right, 
I have to go record the song. By the time it's recorded, mixed, and mastered, you are old, two months late. Old news, mm. yeah. Old news. They yep. like maybe half of that. Those people will do it, and then the other half of that half is going to go actually stream it. The other half of half of that is going to follow you. You know yeah. what I mean? So like have things ready and go out that's kind of what we're working on right now is that like a big fear because like huge is, fear. It, is the, for you example like i know i remember um what was that actor um leslie nielsen he did airplane and after that all he was doing was comedy mm -hmm. like that's like once once you get like famous for something yeah. then that's like you're stuck doing that yeah yeah yeah, yeah 100 king yeah. of one-liners is what <laughs> yeah. he was uh yeah. he was in a recent hard knocks episode for back to football stuff like that and he was you guys because like everybody in the room was like young he was talking to the quarterback so you guys need to know who this guy is because he's the king of one-liners so he like they show him walking into a room and he's like, he's like gotta find it he was he's like open the drawer he's like bingo and he pulls out a bingo card and i was just like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> um, shit like that. I mean, but like, yeah, even with like comedian stuff like that, like yeah. uh, Chris Tucker, right? Yeah, yeah. Blew up on Def Jam off two sets, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, Michael Jackson and uh, I forgot the other one. Yeah. And uh, I'm coming, Mama, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And they would say like uh, he got he got a tour and then like like this tour for Chris Tucker. He did seven of his total 15 minutes that he had of his set on that Def Jam comedy tour. So he surrounded himself with like other comedians who had like full 30, 40 minutes. So I'm like, it could be done. But it's just like you kind of got to know crunch time. Yeah, crunch time. In. Yeah, yeah. And also with the procrastination, I believe you. Know, I think you can do it. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah man. Those yeah. procrastinators got to stick together. Yeah, you know? man. Well, I I have like a lot of stuff kind of backloaded. A lot of nice. ideas. Like yeah, yeah, my yeah, voice yeah. memos are thick. Like yeah. I don't yes. know. Yeah. I don't know if you probably yeah. do too. Yeah, but like. Yeah. Yeah ton of stuff in voice memos and i do kind of have this faith that like I, I can get it done yeah but there is like a little bit of like i usually promote stuff that i've already recorded yeah. which right. i don't know Smart. yeah I, because that's the only way i can do it because i don't i demo my own stuff yeah. but i i'm yeah. not like a uh like a mixer or an same, engineer or anything like yeah. that i don't claim to be i would never i don't know how to do it yet but um like i always have to have it finished yeah before I put it out there, which is always fun when I get comments like giving me advice yeah. for the mix or something like that. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you should turn this up. It's like, I can't, I can't, I dude, can't do that, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but done. yeah, I, I kind of like, I do think that there's a little bit of, a little bit of worry that like, yeah. if I, if I got, let's say like I do like an acoustic thing, it kind of sounds like a folk tune yeah. or yeah. something. Yeah. And then like if that blew up and now I'm like the folk guitar guy. Yeah. But I guess that'd be a fun problem to have to, yeah. to have to like yeah. figure that yeah. equation out. It's better. I mean, it's a problem that we've all would rather have than the problems with success than no views yeah. i had a question for you as a performer because okay. I, I i've like you know i found myself in places like backstage at a show or something and then and i'm, I'm thinking like the day we went to the you know, the palace you know Felipe. i was just like man i'm here this is awesome and this is because i decided to start performing yeah have you ever had moments like that where you're like wow i'm here because i decided to you know yeah i for me it's like always like a really arbitrary thing from like a long time ago like um the one that i i go back to all the time when i'm like backstage i'm like about to go out and i think like oh god i love i like i love performing new uh, music i'm always nervous yeah, yeah, every yeah. single time i perform i'm yeah. super shaky super nervous yeah um, but it's just cause I really care about, it. I want it to go well. For sure. Right. But what always, I always go back to is that my first instrument I ever picked up was a trumpet mm -hmm. and I signed up for clarinet <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, uh, because I thought my sister played clarinet, mm -hmm. turns out she played flute. So I was wrong then oh, too. Wow. So like if I had gone clarinet, I always wonder like, what would I have gotten into? What other kinds of music? Like would I have listened yeah. to as much earth, wind and fire if I didn't play a brass instrument? Yeah. Well, they have saxophones, yeah. Yeah. but like those kinds of things, like, and then where did that make me want to go to school and what did I learn there? And like all those things. So that's what I go back to all the time backstage. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I think like, you, you could have been Lizzo before. Sure. Lizzo. I decided to play a trumpet and now I'm like here and I'm, at, I'm, I'm like going to do a song that I recorded. Yes. Yeah, like in LA, which is like crazy to me. That's like really exciting. I, I just think it's right, like right, so exciting. How often are you going out to LA? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think in an alternate universe where you stay with clarinet, you'd be like in a jazz ensemble today, probably. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, maybe. You know? How often are you going to LA to work with Elliot? Um, gosh, I've, I've probably been like three times the last like six months. So every couple months, and then I do like two or three songs while I'm down there. Okay. And that kind of like carries me over with like releases until the next time I go down. Because okay. I've been, my whole plan this year has just been to do singles. Yeah. And like I'd love to do an album that's like a little bit more connected, you yeah. know, someday soon. Someday. And maybe I'll write that because my wife's about to have a kid. And so like I'll be at home. I'm going to be like yeah. doing, not yeah. doing a lot. Like a lot of time to write, man. For sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or so no time at all. In yeah. post. In post. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So I'll be kind well, of like. Well, you've had a kid. So you actually, you probably know how to 
manage your time a little better. You probably yeah. know what to expect a little bit. Uh, at the time, though, I was I was still doing so much with the band that there were other guys to keep it afloat while I was like off the grid. Okay. So now with like my stuff, I kind of like I want to be off the grid. I want to like hold up and just like hold my baby. Yeah. And like not do anything. Right. Um, but then at the same time, I'm like kind of I got to keep the thing going so that when I come back. I have like some kind of train that's been running and I yeah. didn't have to put a ton of did, time in. Did you become tour dad ever since you had a kid? Tour dad? I was tour dad before I had a kid. Man. <laughs> um, yeah. Gosh, man. I was going to say, you were the... You There's were always a tour dad. There's I, always a, they yeah. would say it if they were sitting right here. I've been yeah. tour dad or like the mediator. They always call me the to be fair guy because oh. I would say, well, to be fair, you know, Kyle is right about this thing. <laughs> and that used to piss them off. They hate it. Yeah. Kyle couldn't stand it because it was always it always was against him. But, yeah. um, <laughs> what's but the, yeah. Okay, what's the, what's the biggest uh, fight you guys have had as a band. Oh my god! Dude. That you can say. <laughs> okay. Um, That's funny. You know, it's probably funny now. Oh, funny. <laughs> um, maybe I feel like um, we were in. Oh, there were so many on like a, a, a van. Like, okay, Josh has not good eyesight, and I'm I'm being generous <laughs> when I say that. The guy can't. See. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can't see. Um, and so <laughs> it's a problem, man. I feel so bad saying it, but he can't see. And so Jaden has always like picked on Josh's driving uh -huh. mm. always mm. dude. And like th there were like by the, by the, like the 20th date on a tour, uh -huh. Josh is like, let me, let me drive. And Jane's like, no, man, like you, you, I'm not going to, no, we're not doing this. Like every time you're not going to come out here. like, you, well, we have to let you drive. Yeah. He's like, well, you drive Jaden. He's like, but I want the back seat. <laughs> and so like Jaden yeah. always used to like sprawl out in the back cause he wasn't driving hardly yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I think like there were like a lot of little like tour squabbles yeah. and like, yeah. did you really just spend our budget on like Cheez-Its? <laughs> you know, we had like a guy that we brought. Uh, that was like wanting to buy Cheez Its and Kyle get like pissed off because like we're low on the budget. And, like, dude, right. Cheez Its are not what we need. Right. We need some like water. That's what right? I would do. Like, right, like right. small snack ones or is it like the big ass box? That was box? the big box, man. Oh, Jumbo yeah. box. This guy yeah, was yeah. huge. He's like 6'5. He's like 230, okay, yeah. 240. Sense, yeah. yeah. Huge. And so, uh, definitely good person. See, okay. In that, that's a good that box. sense, that's like, good see, for me, that's a good box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you guys have to bring he's like, your own money outside of the budget. Yeah to buy that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in a van full of skinny dudes like these guys, you know. But I feel like, I feel what like. What you trying to say? Was that a fat? Yeah, sorry, kind of was. <laughs> kind of was. I'm full of skinny dudes. Like, what you, what you trying to say, Marco? <laughs> I feel like I, we're. I would be pissed too if you spent half our budget on this. <laughs> no, I can, I can, I, That's I, my I just, brother. I would just uh, my brother would do that. Oh, okay, okay. Like, yeah. my brother would do that. My sister does that, yeah. I got into a pretty big fight with my brother too because I, I, like, I don't really smoke, um, but I had never bought weed before. And uh, my and my brother, <laughs> dude, the rock stars they do cocaine. No, 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 no. What I think what you're probably about to start saying is that you don't smoke, but then your brother smokes a lot, and then he probably spent the budget on weed instead of like lasting on something else. Did, well, no, he was okay. no, he was it was his own money. It was like all that. But yeah. I remember we got into kind of a big fight because at the at the time, well, I don't know if I should say this. <laughs> I had I was I I needed to go make a run for him but i didn't know what to do i was like terrified dude i oh. i didn't know what to do and i like we fought so hard about that because i was like dude fuck that i'm You're not like, just doing get in the this. car with the guys fine. Yeah, i'm not i've doing never been this. shot no just just go it's like easy it's really fun no it's not easy i don't know what i'm doing it's like get the, and then, this is before uh, uh cannabis clubs right for sure and like the no actually it wasn't before oh, that. it was like yeah. really e it in hindsight, super easy to do. Yeah. Oh. But like, I was in my head because I didn't know the lingo. Same like, I didn't know what to do. Same. And so, like, the, and the names are always like Lemon Double Smash or something like these. Like, Pineapple fucking, Express. Yeah. For sure. And I'm like, this is a joke, man. I'm not walking in there saying, like, give me, like, the, the purple nurple or whatever. <laughs> purple like, nurple. Yeah, yeah. I'm not doing that. And so, like, th those sound like little. A, sound like a narc. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, red hair. Yeah, yeah. I know, man. I sound stupid. But it's like, those are the fights that we have because we're, we're all brothers. We are, like, yes. by yeah. blood. Yes. Like, we are brothers. Yes. So, we grow up having these little squabbles. So we never like threw hands or anything like yeah. that, but yeah. um, the, all the big tour fights were just like normal. It felt normal. Yeah, yeah. It was home. Yeah, yeah. Except you're like crammed in a van. In a van. That's hilarious. Yeah. You're like, why don't you fucking go get it, dude? Like you fucking know the lingo and shit like yeah. that. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I need you to get it. Like no, like no, dude. Like I fucking yeah, yeah. All right, man. So we are. We're about that time. We really appreciate you coming on, man. Dude, it was so seriously. Much fun, thank, you. thank you. We so got to have you on again. Yeah. Probably so talk absolutely. more about teaching for these guys. Definitely, yeah. Because yeah, this, this one was for me. 
<laughs> that's one of the music Great. titles for me. We should talk about teaching. That sounds fun. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if people want to hear about it. The balance of they teaching. Do. And, they they do. balance of teaching and yeah, music and stuff. You'd be surprised. Yeah, you'd be, yeah, people you'd in the comments like that. Yeah, you'd be, yeah, yeah. You'd be surprised. Uh, the, the, uh, what was it, the one like, uh, we don't give our homework no yeah, more? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That was a big yeah, surprise. Yeah. Yeah. After yeah. you have, maybe after like your baby's a yeah. little bigger, you can come back and we can yeah. talk about, you know. Because it sounds huge. That yeah. sounds great. Yeah, yeah. I'd love it. We'll definitely do it. Also, we got to get a writing session together. Yes, and we got to get a show going. I got to get on the show. We got to I'm putting the pressure on camera right now. We almost, no, we almost had a show booked and the promoter of, I won't say which club, decided he couldn't find a third band like at, like within three months of booking the show, which I know damn well we could have done by ourselves. For sure. Could have done it. I well, now, whatever. There. So now we got to book something else. I'm getting the verbal confirmation. I'm looking right at the camera, too. Yeah, I'm getting yeah. the verbal confirmation. It's going to happen. We're, we're, it's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. We're going to write something <laughs> together, too. Whatever. All right. Where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me. Uh, my name is Jesse Crossan on everything. So, TikTok, Instagram. There's a couple Jesse Crossans. One of them's an ex con. Whoa. He's got like a great story. <laughs> Whoa. Shout out, Jesse. Yeah. He's got a great name. Um, but his he is like, he's got a great story. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right now. It's like all the Marcos Molinos uh, are ex cons, too. <laughs> he's got a great. And alcoholics. Great story. And, but yeah, they're all drug addicts too. somehow he's so much bigger than me, but so, somehow I got Jesse Crossan on all socials. So just J E S S E C R O S S O N. Find me on Spotify. The whole deal. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. Don't promote the wrong one. Like, what's his name? No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. That was so fucking that's, funny. That's yeah. such a that good. was such a good clip. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate that's been guys. the voice Thank party. And we're out. Ooh.